Hello everyone. We're back with Lecture 2 on Westward Expansion after the Civil War. Besides Reconstruction, another post-war development that will affect the lives of millions of people will be the process of Westward Expansion. Now for the longest time, Hollywood depictions of this era of the Wild West or the Old West have tended to represent the people moving to the Midwest and Far West as largely white Americans. That is an incorrect representation, though, of this time period. The reality of this era is that the Old West was one of the most ethnically diverse places in the country. Fortunately, within the last few decades, Hollywood screenwriters are learning more about this period and they're beginning to more accurately depict on the big screen and the small screen the reality of the Old West as a place where there was a mixing of many different cultures. The Old West was an incredibly dangerous place too, but not because there were constant shootouts, um, uh, you know, on street corners or people uh, shooting people over a game of cards in saloons. Instead, it was largely due to environmental factors and disease and overwork that led to such a high death rate in the Midwest and Far West during this period. For those of you who remember the Oregon Trail video game, which was supposed to be an educational tool teaching students in the 1990s about how uh, difficult just the traveling conditions out west were, it actually was fairly accurate. It was a frustrating game to play because someone either died of dysentery, your wagon got overturned in a river, uh, and you lost everything that you owned, meaning that you couldn't continue forward. Uh, but yeah, it actually was a decent educational tool talking about the many, many dangers that settlers to these frontier regions faced during the era. So if people are quite literally risking their lives to move to Kansas, to move to Oregon during this period, what was the draw? What was the lure? Why were so many people motivated uh, to undertake something that they may not have made it out alive on the other side of? Simply put, access to land. One of the primary drivers behind westward expansion during the 19th century was the desire to find cheap, available agricultural land to settle on and begin farming. Why are people having to travel to the Midwest and the Far West to find cheap, available land? This population density map that I have here on the slide should tell you what you need to know. The United States began as a country hugging the Atlantic Ocean, the East Coast, and while in the century or so after the founding of the United States, we do see westward expansion across the Appalachian Mountain Range, look at how heavily populated many areas of the eastern half of the United States are. With such a high population density, therefore, cheap, available farmland does not exist. There's enough buyers of agricultural land in the eastern part of the United States who are ready to snatch it up uh, that this drives up the price of agricultural land. So if you are a second born son in a family, a farming family, one who is not going to receive the inheritance of the, your family's land, where do you go to try and support your family? You have to pack up everything in a wagon and move west to the frontier regions. In other words, all of the choice, rich farmland to grow crops like corn or cotton was already taken in the East, and when land becomes available for sale, the price is quickly driven up outside the means of most poor Americans. From the standpoint of the federal government, they also want to see these sparsely populated lands in the Midwest and the Far West settled. So in order to encourage more Americans to move out West, the Homestead Act will be passed during the Civil War in 1862. The Homestead Act promised citizens, male or female, including freed slaves, that they could receive 160 acres of land, free and clear, for agreeing to settle on that parcel of land in the West for a span of five years. And the lure of this land proved powerful. Indeed, during this period, Americans settled more than 430 million acres of land in the Midwest and Far West, doubling the size of the nation.
In fact, between 1876 and 1900, so many Americans were flooding to the West that eight new states quickly entered the Union. Colorado, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Washington, Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah, all in quick secession. Now, there's a catch with the Homestead Act, however. In order to receive your title to the land, proving ownership, free and clear, without having to pay a dime, you had to stay on this parcel of land for five years. That may not sound like such a big deal, but we're going to talk about the many uh, hurdles, the many obstacles that the, these settlers faced in not only getting out to the land, but in settling the land itself. You had to stay on that land. You had to improve that land, meaning you had to farm it. You had to build fences. Um, uh, you had to build barns. You had to help to set up communities in this area. If you failed to stay for five years, you lost your title to that land. The need for cheap farmland was a major driver of settlement during this period. We will also see that many of those who are relocating to these regions are looking to make money in other ways aside from farming. The mining industry will attract many settlers to the West. Those prospectors for gold, for example, who will be looking for it in California starting as early as 1848 and 1849. We will see by the time we get to the 1870s that there will be prospectors uh, panning the streams in the Black Hills of South Dakota, also looking to hopefully get rich quick. However, uh, very few of these people will become independently wealthy based upon, you know, panning for gold and streams. Instead, over time you'll see mining corporations that are looking for less valuable minerals. Uh, silver mining operations will begin to open in places such as Nevada. You'll see other trace minerals being mined as well during this period. Think copper, uh, tin. All of these will be helping to power the Industrial Revolution in the United States, and we'll see massive mining operations opening up. So for many workers seeking jobs in these industries, they're moving to these regions. Another way settlers sought to make money was through cattle ranching. The ranchers followed the railroads onto the plains since they needed this transportation system to ship their cattle from the far west back to the slaughterhouses and meatpacking industries of Chicago and the East Coast. Speaking of railroads, the railroads will be another major driver of westward settlement during this period. To give you an indication of how quickly railroads began springing up through the Midwest and Far West after the Civil War, in 1865 there were only about 3,200 miles of track west of the Mississippi River. By 1890, however, in only 25 years, this number had increased astronomically to over 70,000 miles of track connecting the Mississippi River Valley to the Pacific Ocean. Indeed, fully one half of America's industrial output of steel during the period went just to constructing railroad lines. One of the most important pieces of railroad track laid was in 1869 at Promontory Point, Utah. With this final piece of track, the first transcontinental railroad spanning the entire continent was completed. This meant that now travelers could leave the East Coast and arrive on the West Coast without ever having set foot off of a train. How did railroads increase settlement in this region? Well, from the standpoint of employers uh, in the region, so think farmers, cattle ranchers, uh, mining operations, much of their market for their goods is back in the eastern part of the country. So now that we have railroad lines connecting where things are being produced in the west with where they're being sold in the east, this means that these employers can continue to enlarge their operations, offering more paid employment for people willing to relocate to these areas. For people considering the move, uh, to these areas, railroads were also a much faster mode of transportation than walking beside one of these slow-moving uh, wagon trains. Traveling by train was also more physically comfortable. It was not just faster. It offered a roof over your head, keeping out the winter snow or the hot summer sun. 
This faster mode of transportation was also safer because it, it was less likely to be attacked by hostile Native American tribes, uh, less likely for bands of robbers uh, to fall upon you and deprive you maybe not just of your wealth but also of your life. However, you had to pay a premium for all of this comfort and safety. Railroad travel was much more expensive than simply outfitting your own wagon and hitting the trail. For this reason, many poorer families during the 19th century still relied on the old-fashioned way to get to the plains on a wagon. We've established some of the reasons why people were moving thousands of miles to the west during the era for economic advancement. And with railroad lines now connecting eastern, eastern and western coasts, the journey was now safer and speedier than ever. But what about the people who were moving out? Who were they? And what were their lives like on the frontier? To begin with, as I mentioned at the start of the lecture, the Old West was an incredibly diverse region. For example, taking just one small population of workers during the period, those that became known as cowboys, uh, this relatively small population between 1864 and 1884 numbered only about 35,000 individuals. But of this small population, approximately 25% or a quarter of cowboys were African American, 12% were Mexican or Latino, and 63% were white. Understand, too, that it's not just Americans, both black and white, that are moving to this region. We have large numbers of immigrants from around the world that will also come to this area seeking to better their lives. We see many Asian immigrants landing on the Pacific coast in the port of San Francisco and then moving to what we call the West, they're moving in an easterly direction. They're moving inland away from the coast. And in particular, it will be large numbers of Chinese immigrants coming into the United States during this period that will help to build the first transcontinental railroad. Actually, we'll have a lot of Irish immigrants helping to build the eastern part of the first transcontinental railroad, and it will be many Chinese laborers uh, that will help to build the western link of the first transcontinental rail line. Sadly, many of these immigrants, the Irish as well as the Chinese, will lose their lives in large numbers building this railroad system. Desperate for work, many of them were forced to take some of the most dangerous jobs, like laying explosives. In addition to many Asian and Irish immigrants, we will also see a number of new arrivals to the country settling in the Midwest that hail from Scandinavia as well as Germany. And many of these arrivals will come not alone, but they'll come with very large family groups and they will settle in entire communities, especially in the upper Midwest in places like Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota. We also must say a word or two about some permanent Hispanic residents, especially of the Southwest, during this period of rapid transformation. Hispanic peoples had lived in Texas and the Southwest since the 16th century, and moving forward in time after the Mexican-American War in the mid-19th century, uh, Mexico will lose huge portions of territory in what we think of as present-day California, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah. And fast forward now to the period of the Wild West or the Old West after the Civil War, and you've got a, a tremendous amount of pressure coming in the form of American settlers pouring into these regions and beginning to take over, to squat on land that legally belongs to the Hispanic residents uh, who had uh, controlled a lot of this territory for hundreds of years. As their land titles are challenged by many of these new American immigrants and they can't provide the paperwork to show that their family legally owns this piece of land, they will simply be, uh, be lost. They will be forced off of their land and lose a lot of their wealth. We'll see a resulting uh, amount of discrimination against Latinos by many American settlers in this area, leading to violence against some of them in addition to the loss of their land. And, of course, there were the original inhabitants of the Old West, the native peoples. We'll talk more about them in part two of this lecture.